Hi, this is a tutorial to show you the basics of working with audio. For example, DJs use WAV files and AIFF files or AAC or MP3 files. AIFF is the Apple format and WAV, w -A -V, is the Windows format. Both these files are uncompressed. That means that they're not altered, they're full. MP3, which is what most people listen to music on these days over the web and um, downloading from YouTube and wherever else, um, they're getting them an MP3 format, which is a compressed format. Now, a high quality MP3, which has got a high quality compression on it, usually means a larger number, like 320 kilobytes a second or whatever. Um, they're usually better in quality and it's sometimes quite hard to tell the difference between those and an actual WAV format or an AIFF format. So th they become very popular. Um, but basically what I'm going to show you here, what we see on the screen here is some WAV files. Understand that when we say WAV file we mean AIFF or MP3. They all look basically the same according to the song. But we have two songs here in an older version of WaveLab. Now what I'm going to do is zoom in on this particular song here, up the top. I'm just zooming in so you can have a look. In fact, we'll take the second song away and we'll drag that down a bit so you can see it a little better. All right. Now, all this ups and downs is the dynamics of the wave file. Okay. This is the loudness and the softness, essentially. And I should mention at this point that wave files, the uncompressed format, can either be 16-bit, 24-bit or higher. Most digital audio workstations work in 24-bit. However, most of the stuff that you hear on like, say, for example, a CD, etc., 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 is 16-bit. Again, it can be quite hard to tell the difference if you're not listening in a perfect environment. Okay, so also they can be 44.1, 48, 96 and higher. Generally, again, 48 is often what you'll find on um, videos, you know, DVDs and stuff like that. The audio will generally be 48. Most everything else, CDs, stuff you download from the net will be 44.1. So what we're saying here is the average that's being used that everyone's tossing around with you using an uncompressed format such as WAVE and AIFF is 44.1 and 16-bit, okay? But if you're going to work in a digital audio workstation, you might want to consider using 24-bit files. And uh, some people work at a higher ratio. They sometimes master at 96 kilohertz. It gets complicated, and we'll talk about that at another time. Okay, here we're looking at the WAV file. This particular WAV file, we're going to run an analysis on it right now, and we will see a few things about it. Okay, you can see that this is a, apparently a 24-bit file. Um, but what we're really interested in, we'll just drag a selection here. We're analyzing a section here and we're looking at RMS power. This is important. Um, RMS means root mean square. Again, just call it RMS. The average is what we're concerned about. Minus 7.65, which is not very much. What that essentially means is the loudest bits are here and the lowest bits are here. Not very much. Now we're going to zoom out on this file. We're going to actually have a look at how it looks in a zoomed out position. Now notice, this is typical of a modern type file. Notice it's really crushed. It's right up towards the edge. It's almost completely black, almost full. That means that it's very loud and the dynamic range is very little. The dynamic range essentially is the bit between the lowest sounding piece of music and the highest, the loudest, the quietest and the loudest. Okay, so zooming in, you can start to see them now, quieter bits and then quieter bits here and then louder bits up here. All right, the reason why they're able to do this in modern recordings is through compression and limiting. Again, more on that later. Um, not necessarily in this tutorial though. If you went back to say the 1960s, or well, the 1970s, wave files look more like this section here. Much greater dynamic range. Watch this number here. 
See this number here. I'm going to reanalyze that section. See how it's increased. All right. We'll go into this section here. And we're going to analyze it again. See how it's now minus 17. That means this is a huge, a lot of distance before it reaches peak uh, from the softest to the loudest point. Okay. So <laughs> modern recordings have decreased dynamic range to make them sound louder. That's important to understand. So when you go to, say, a dance or an EDM festival or you hear a DJ or you download something on YouTube, you're listening from iTunes, generally speaking, they call it the loudness wars. Everything's made as loud as possible. This is a typical track. It's not my track uh, from a modern recording. And we can hear it's a trance track. And we can hear that it's pretty, pretty loud there. I haven't got it turned up before. Volume is here on this old version of Wave Lab. I haven't got it turned up before, but you can hear that it's pretty loud. Now I'm going to drag something else into here so you can understand a little bit more. This is called a spectrum analyzer. These sounds up here are the very top sounds. Of These sounds here are the mid top sounds. They're the ones that can hurt your ears if you're at a live music concert and these are too loud. Uh, that'll really, you go, oh, God, that really hurt my ears. Oh, right. These ones don't tend to hurt your ears down here. These are lower frequency sounds, sub frequency sounds. Now, because this is a trance type recording, it's fairly thumpy on the bottom end. So you'll notice, I'll play that again, you'll notice that mainly it's operating in, in the frequencies between, you know, 20 hertz to about 340 hertz. That's that's low. Right? I could filter it out, show you, and you hear boom, 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 sort of thing. Uh, as you get up here, mid-high frequencies and high frequencies. So this is the basic explanation of what a wave file is um, and what basic audio is. Now, when we've understood this a little bit, I'll show you later on how to import these audio files into DJ units, how to work with them in digital audio workstations and so on. So we'll end it here. I just basically wanted to show you um, how all this works. Okay, so we'll leave it there and uh, we'll see you on the next tutorial.